Another week has passed, which is perfect timing for another episode of the Parkrun Adventurers. My name is Scott Trickett. Welcome, Mel Erbacker. Thank you, Scott Trickett. This is a podcast all about Parkrun and Parkrun Adventures. And on the weekend, as the two hosts of said podcast, we like to get up to the odd adventure here and there that are Parkrun related. This week, Mel, I went in search for my E for my alphabet. A little bit elusive, the old E. Um, it's a vowel, but not many places are named with the letter E. Name names starting with the letter E. But we We've launched got a couple in Victoria. We do. We've had a couple of new ones recently, and we launched Eastern Gardens on the weekend. Now, you might have seen this on TV, or you may not have, because you were all at Parkrun. I hope you're all at Parkrun, but we were on the TV now. Channel 7 Sunrise were down there to help celebrate. You're silver screen famous. Yeah, well, I don't think I got my fat head on the TV. We did record it and we watched it. I made sure the attractive people in my family, i.e. my wife and daughter, I pushed them in front of the camera as much as possible. (laughs) But I, working in this space for a number of years, I've I've learnt learnt how to avoid the camera. And the best trick is... You know where to stand. Yeah, it's behind the cameraman. Because he's never going to pivot to get a shot just of the guy standing behind him because that's not a great shot. Fair enough. Yeah. Did you have but, a good morning? Was well, it yeah, fun? I had a great morning, but I was working. Television at Parkrun? That's not an every week thing. No, it's not. It's not. So I'm sure everyone listening to the podcast is aware that Medibank have launched their free and active initiative. And under that is they, they want to get more people moving, which is a great, great idea. And... Um, They've helped us launch 40 events, and Eastern Gardens was the 40th event under that, and so we, we had a celebration. And it was a very different launch. Like, the, if you came along to Eastern Gardens, um, don't expect that to be your regular, because we had, we had free coffee, we had coffee machines set up, we had massages, for God's sake. You could have finished your park run and then... Grabbed a massage if you wanted to. We had picnic blankets down. We had this massive, awesome PB bell. Um, and as I said, in, a, in the TV show, um, producing live crosses every half hour. Uh, they got to run through a banner, like an a AFL-style footy banner. That uh, I'll peel back the curtain here a bit, Mel, in uh, the discussions. Because, as you know, you know that uh, I work for, for Parkrun. And in the discussions, we were, we were planning this uh, event, and the, the banner idea was thrown around by our colleagues at Medibank, and I wasn't sure how it was going to work, but they assured me that it was going to be good, people were going to have fun, get into it, and um, I was wrong, they were right, people loved running through it, visually it looked good, but it's not the normal, it's not the normal for a parkrun launch. But the biggest disappointment of the day is that because I was working, I didn't get my E at the end of the day. You didn't run. I didn't run. Oh, so you can't tell us about the course then? Well, I can because I've walked it and ran it a few times in preparation. And it's a, it's a lovely course. It's a sort of an out and back and then it's a bit short, so you've got to do a little bit extra out and back. So it can get a bit confusing at the end, particularly with over 300 people, but Well, maybe simpletons like me could get confused, but not many people on the day got too confused. But it's it's a nice little path um, in a beautiful location of Geelong, down by the bay. You've got tree-lined avenues all the way. About a kilometre in, you run under bats. And so what I did do is... Is I walked so you run under bats, as in like the flying kind. Yeah, of the bats. flying, the flying bats. They're all in the tree. About Presumably one. asleep. Yeah, at that asleep time. and hanging upside down. So they're all there. And uh, what I did do is I walked with uh, Kasha, who wasn't feeling great. So we walked just a little bit because she wanted to run through the banner, or I wanted her to run through the banner. So I made her do that. Then I caught up to them and, and picked um, Kasha up. So, but we got to the bats. And I think the kids are going to love it because Kasha was perked up and she was excited to see the bats. So there's lots to see at Eastern Gardens and it's good because I'm going to head back there. I'm uh, I'm reinvigorated on my alphabet challenge because I'm pretty close. I'm surprisingly closer than I thought. How many letters have you got to go? 
don't don't get into specifics, but it's only a couple. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a couple. I plugged I plugged my numbers into the the Chrome extension uh, last week, and I'm really close to the Bingo challenge. I'm really close to the BGS challenge, which I had no idea about. You know, I actually plugged it in last week too and Did had you? a look. Yeah. Um, what what inspired you? Uh, I wanted to know whether one of the indexes that Danny had mentioned to me was on there and it's not. So I, I don't know how one goes about trying to figure out how far up that index is or whether or not they just have to like manually figure it out and which way too much work for me. So I won't be pursuing that. <laughs> mm, I, I think um, we were motivated by the same reason because I was listening to With Me Now and they were cracking on about it and they mentioned something about some index I've forgotten now, but it wasn't there either. So either Dan is lying um, or it's I selective the to UK. Index. I'm pretty sure the Wilson index. Yeah, isn't that's there. it. That's it. Or maybe yeah. it is there and it says three for me, but it doesn't elaborate on what all my other missing ones are. So it's like, well, if you want to join the dots to get further along, then how do you know? Like, I might not have done event number four, but. I could have done five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, for all these other ones. And it's kind of like a game of Tetris. If you just get number four, then boom, you, you sort of clear all those extra ones as well. So I want I want to know how that works. I think we'll have to get in touch with Mr. Norman and, and get the inside word. So if you don't know what we're talking about, where have you been? But it's the, if you've got Chrome and you install an extension called Running Challenges, what it does is it links up your parkrun profile with all these extra challenges that are unofficial, but certainly for adventurers that listen to this podcast, they will love it. It's a bit of fun. We should make we should make it official. Let's 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 knock on some doors. Let's make some calls. Or maybe let's not. Let's just leave it unofficial. Shut up, Scott. Say something, Mel. I'm trying. I'm trying. I want to give a shout out to the guys at um, Running Challenges for. Um, creating the, the Chrome extension for starters, but also for um, being nice enough to admit that their Compass Club is the wrong Compass Club. Oh, really? Even if it's if it's the um, the popular one in the UK or wherever, they they have acknowledged that it's not the right one. So kudos to them. That's and they good. tweeted us. Yep. How how's, how are you going on Twitter lately, Scotty? I'm loving it, loving it. Check in every day. Check all Excellent. my tweets. My retweets. <laughs> you know where we haven't been lately? Strava. Yeah. Yep. It's been a little while. Mm. Look, I'm going to bring it up before you do. My August challenge, I know, it failed miserably. Um, nobody came along for the ride, so I am not. I don't feel too bad about it. But well, if you recall, <laughs> I had the Freedom Challenge once a week. Yeah. I was there for the ride the first week and you didn't join me. <laughs> I was there for the week before August started. That what, that's not the <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's not how these challenges work, there's Scotty. Flaw, there's flaws in my, my challenges, but that's okay. That's okay. We'll save that for another August. Um, but streaky September's in the books. Big Done. time in the books. Yep. Close, close the books on that one. It's happening. Uh, countdown's on, literally. You might even be listening to this and you've missed the start. No, surely not. Yep. Hopefully not. Shall we shall we elaborate though a little bit more on Sticky September later and get to our interviews? Perhaps? We should. Yeah, yeah. It's a cracker this week. Our most requested guests when we did our Pearl Stration, which is also coming up next month or the month after. More I love Pearl Stration time. Yeah, Pearl Stration's great. Uh, but yeah, enough of us. Let's go to our guest. Our guest this week is very familiar to everybody involved in running in Australia. He's arguably our most famous marathoner runner. Welcome to the Parkrun Adventurers, Rob DiCostella. Hi, Scott. Great to be able to join you. Thanks for joining us. You, um, you're a legend of running in this country, Rob. But what we want to talk to you about is your involvement with IMF. We also want to get back to your running days, but... Um, this weekend at Park Run, we're celebrating the Warrior Park Run, and you've got your Warrior Run. I'm curious if we go right back to the beginnings. Why did you start IMF? Well, I mean, um, yeah, this is our uh, 
uh, we're heading into our ninth year now. So we started back in 2010. Um, and initially, uh, the whole thing started because I sort of had a, a random phone call from a, uh, a guy in Sydney uh, um, who wanted to do a, a documentary. And, uh, and he said, look, you know, he said, uh, you know, my brother's just run his first marathon and I just ran the city to surf and, uh, and he said, oh, you know, um, do, you think, do you think Indigenous Australians can run like the Africans? Do you think there's that, you know, fundamental physiological long-distance endurance ability? Um, and, you know, as you know, you know, the Africans dominate everything on, on the world stage. Um, so it was a pretty interesting sort of a, a question to, to ask, you know, to, to see whether maybe it would be possible to one day find... Um, you know, one of our Australian Indigenous men or women who had that fundamental capacity to, to take on that African dominance. So, you know, we, we started, um, you know, sort of on this little project. And as I said, he wanted to do a documentary, he wanted to select a, a group of, of young Aboriginal and, uh, and follow them and train them for, for about, you know, six to nine months and then take them to, to New York. Um, so you know, we we started and um, we ended up with four four Aboriginal fellows. Um, you know, two from Alice Springs, one from up in the um, uh, remote community of Manangrida, and and another one from the Kimberleys in Kununurra. And uh, and you know, we sort of uh, those fellows didn't know what a marathon was. They never never heard of the New York City Marathon. Never even heard of it. City to surf or fun run. They were all very much footy and basketball based, but um, you know, sport was a, a big part of their lives. And um, I, it was the first time, I guess, personally, that I had an opportunity to to get out into some of the the more remote parts of the country and and uh, see face to face our indigenous culture and also be confronted with what was a very disturbing situation. You know, I mean, I've travelled all around the world and been to a lot of third world countries and to see the, uh, the dysfunction and the poverty and the, and the problems face to face in our own backyard was um, something I was a bit ashamed of as a, you know, as a proud Australian, uh, to see our First Nations people in such a, a state of dysfunction and, and so many problems. So, you know, sort of, um, it was very confronting. And, um, but then on the other hand, it was incredibly um, uh, thrilling and, and, and rewarding to, to see the beauty of our Indigenous culture and to be welcomed into the families and into the communities um, and work with those four fellows and their families. And, um, uh, and it wasn't, you know, so much as we progressed along, it wasn't so much the grog and the, and the obesity and the diabetes and all of the chronic disease that disturbed me the most. The thing that disturbed me the most was, was the, uh, the, lack of, the lack of self-respect and pride. You know, there was like a, a culture of hopelessness and a, an attitude of why, why bother? You know, why should I bother going to school or why should I bother getting a job or why should I bother getting off the smokes? Uh, because you know there's nothing there's nothing for me, and and uh, it was that hollow hollowness that really disturbed me the most. And what I saw when those four fellows eventually made it across the finish line in New York was the opposite. You know I saw this incredible pride of accomplishment and and this sense of achievement of of doing something that was really really hard. You know sort of running running a marathon uh, off less than six months of training and only one of them had ever got over 30K. The others had struggled to get through 20K. Um, but on the day, they all finished. And and it was that pride, I think, which made me realise that maybe there was a, an opportunity to use running and to use the marathon, not to find an elite runner, but to find and to promote a sense of pride and self worth, and obviously a healthy, active lifestyle through. So that was the start of it, and, and uh, you know, that was back in 2010. And 
And uh, as of last year, um, you know, we've now got 75 Indigenous graduates with men and women. We take six men and six women, 18 to 30 year olds, from right across the country every year. So we have a squad of 12 that we work with and coach and put through a compulsory education component um, and then you know, take them over to, to New York and, and, um, and get them to, to do something which is so far outside their comfort zone that when they do achieve it, the, the sense of personal pride but also the shared pride that their, their families and their communities have uh, is, is just amazing and it's, it's empowering and it's life changing. And, and then, you know, and then we work with them when, when they come back, you know, getting them to run a marathon is great, but if that's all we did, then we'd fail. Uh, we have to actually then work with our graduates and those 75 and, and provide opportunities for, for them to continue to, to grow and develop and make a difference. And um, and that's you know what we do as a foundation, as a charity, is you know we raise funds so that we can provide them with grants and scholarships and help them to set up their own running groups and and help them to get kids involved through the communities and through the schools, um, get the elderly out walking and exercising. So it's a whole range, and and you know it flows on beyond just running as well. You know, helping them to maybe go to university for the first time ever or to start a small business or to, to do things which, you know, address the, some of the, the really personal issues that they've struggled with and they don't want their, their children and their nephews and their nieces to have to go through that same thing. So it's an incredibly empowering and a, and a powerful journey that we take them on and, um, and then, you know, work with them um, beyond, beyond that marathon to, to support them to, to drive change. Rob, there's no doubt that IMF is making a massive change to a lot of people's lives. You, you mentioned that you know, you're know you in the ninth year now and obviously your goals and your motivations for doing the project have changed from you know finding those elites to begin with to, to giving people that sense of pride. It's been an evolution. How, how do you, let's say, how, how has it changed in terms of how you picked those first sort of intake to how you recruit now? What's the process involved behind that? How do people apply? Yeah, uh, thanks, Mel. Um, yeah, look, um, it is. it has changed and it's, it's grown enormously. You know, when, when we first started back in 2010, you know, we struggled to find four fellows. You know, they were getting a, a free trip to New York <laughs> and, and we still struggled to, to find them and they didn't know what a marathon was, so that wasn't so much of a disincentive. Um, but now, you know, we have nearly 150 applicants every year um, and, and you know, they are amazing young Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who have pretty much just had a gut full of, of the way things are and want things to change and be better and they want to be part of, of, of that, that future. Um, so, you know, we, um, I've got, you know, three of our graduates who work with me full time here in Canberra in our head office. Uh, and one of them, Adrian Dodson Shaw from Broome, um, he he ran with us back in 2014, uh, 2015. He he, uh, I took him up to the North Pole. One of our our supporters donated a couple of entries to the North Pole Marathon. So Adrian and I went up there, and and uh, and he ran his second marathon up right on the on the floating ice of the of the North Pole, having never seen snow before, <laughs> coming from Broome. Uh, so he's an amazing, strong individual, and um, and then you know he then you know I really was keen to have as many of our graduates involved in in uh, helping strategically and, and operationally delivering our our foundation. So um, he came with his family from Broome, and now he's based here in Canberra, um, and and he manages the program. and His job is to is to interview and screen every applicant. So he travels around the country for nearly, you know, sort of six weeks on the road, interviewing the applicants and test a little bit of physical testing. You know, the, the girls have to do a 3K run and the guys do a 5K run. But the most important thing is the interview. And, and they, need to, uh, they need to tell Adrian what their, what their purpose is, you know, what their drive. And, and when they hit the wall at 30K in their marathon, where, 
where are they going to go? What are they going to go to to dig deep to keep them going when their body's saying, I want to stop, I want to quit, it's all too hard. But uh, they have to have something deep inside them which is going to keep them driving forward. And um, and then we also have to see in them the the capacity to be these change agents, these these you know inspiring leaders and advocates for, for a better future. And we work with them to to cultivate and refine and develop those attributes. But we you know we have to see within them the potential to, to be those leaders. So you know they're the two things. One is you know what's going to keep them going when they hit the wall, and the other is you know will they be able to channel that into driving change across Australia? So so that's the, the basic criteria that we use to select the the, the twelve. Um, a lot of them obviously miss out. You know, we nearly 150 applicants, so a lot miss out. But because we work with 18 to 30 year olds. Um, if they're, you know, as long as they're not 30, then they have an opportunity to come back and try out again next year. And um, and we want to see the sort of people who don't give up, you know, just because you missed out this year, uh, if you give up and walk away, then you're probably not the right person for, for IMP anyway. So we want people who are, are not only going to try out again next year, but also add to their story, you know, demonstrate through what they're doing that they do have that leadership capacity that, that we're looking for and um and you know we had one of the fellas um in the in the squad 2015 uh Zibian fielding who who uh he's you know he's the face on our warrior run medal um it's just amazing to be able to acknowledge and recognize Zibian. now Zibian tried out four times before he finally got in and he's from a tiny little remote community called Nimali with about 300 people in the APY lands in remote South Australia. And um, and what he's done uh, since his IMP uh, journey as a graduate has just been amazing. You know, he's raised over $50,000. He's a, he's a, a nurse practitioner, a, a health worker in the Nimalee clinic, clinic. So he's working every day with local Aboriginal people struggling with chronic disease and, and health problems. And he's he's you know not only passionate about driving change, but he's actually out there leading. And he's a, he's a, the sort of person that we want to acknowledge and recognise as our as our warrior, as a noble warrior who who's out there fighting for a better future and driving change. Um, and uh, so it's great to be able to recognise him. But he no, he's really uh, for years and years tried out and missed out and came back the following year. He's always close. But uh, but just never made it until until we finally selected him. Rob, I love this idea of change agents from your grads, and Zibian is a great example. So, what's the success rate of all your other graduates going through the program? Do a lot of them go on and, and make a difference in their community? And have you got some stories around what that difference means? What what it looks like? Um, yeah, yeah. Look, absolutely. Um, out of the seventy-five, there's probably about sixty that are still actively involved. Um, we use a lot of social media, and and even those that we don't, you know, sort of uh, work with and hear from, you know, every every few weeks or so, they're still engaged and following us. And then, you know, sort of something will happen. Like, you know, one of the guys from two thousand and eleven from Sunbury in in Victoria. Uh, you know, I, I saw on, on his Facebook that he just started his own little electrical business with a with a mate. He's an electrician, so I sent him a little note and and you know came back with this huge big spiel about how proud he is and what he's done and you know, so they're they're still um, doing things which which are, are amazing. Um, a lot of them don't necessarily continue running or or you know, running marathons, but then we've had others like you know Charlie Ma. Who was our first IMP graduate back from 2010? He's run five marathons um, and and it has just continued to, to drive change. He started off in Alice Springs and and now he's he's uh, a director of the Clontarf Academies in Port Macquarie and he's started a, a, a deadly running an Indigenous and non-Indigenous running and walking group called Raw Running and Walking. And uh, he's got over 150 participants in his, he and his wife, in this uh, 
uh, deadly, it fought Macquarie deadly. So, you know, I mean, there are so many stories um, about about the graduates. I mean, every single one of them are amazing. And, uh, you know, Social Ventures Australia, which is a, a big uh, a research and evaluation company, did a, a social return on investment evaluation of the program and, and followed three years of our, of our graduates and looked at what they were doing before and what they were doing after and the impact that they'd had on their lives and on the lives of their communities and families. And, and they tried to quantify and measure that and give it a dollar value. And they, they after you know, a huge amount of, of work and interviews and analysis, calculated a 6.6-fold return for every dollar that's been put into the IMP program. It's generated a 6.6-fold uh, return. And so you know, I think not only in terms of the, the life-changing experience, but the benefits to the community and the benefits to the country uh, are, are just so clear and, and so strong. And, and, and it's it just been amazing to, to see the way the uh, the graduates have just you know, continued to step up. And it's like, you know, sort of, you know, when you run a marathon, anyone who's run a marathon, um, you, you're never the same afterwards, are you? I mean, you, you know, you've pushed yourself so hard and you, you've been struggling, but your mind is so strong to keep you going and to stay positive and then to be able to transfer that to other areas in your life um, is is such a, a life-changing and powerful thing to to go uh, like a rite of passage you know it's it's something which we're we're using to to really you know uh, uh, have our graduates realize how strong they are and also the impact that they can have on on others which is it's just amazing I love that you're finding leaders and, and you're giving them the skills and empowering them to, you know, continue the impact. So it's all just going to filter on and on like, like a big domino effect and, and it's getting out to the, the most remote areas as well. You mentioned Zibian is the, the face on the Warrior Medal. I've got one of those in the post on its way to me at the moment. Rob, can you tell us a little bit more about the Warrior Run for those who haven't heard of it? Yeah, absolutely, Mel. I mean, the, the Warrior Run, this is our fourth year, um, and we have a, a major event in Centennial Park. Um, and, you know, I want to I build it up to be a fundraising initiative for the foundation, you know, a little bit like the Mother's Day Classic for Breast Cancer. You know, I want us to be able to, to use the Warrior Run to celebrate and acknowledge men uh, as, as these noble warriors. Um, you know, sort of women, that, and rightly so, get a lot of, you know, Mother's Day is a really important event and day on the calendar. But it's so important also for us to to recognise and celebrate and acknowledge men and the really important role that men play as fathers and brothers and uncles and grandfathers and, and sons and, and the contribution that men make to families and, and to communities. So, so our warrior run is about, you know, acknowledging and celebrating and recognising those those men in our lives who have helped us to be the the great person that we are. Today. It's a little bit of a tribute run. So we have a a five k and a ten k, a ten k run and a five k run walk in Centennial Park, and then we also have a um, a kids and dads or or kids and and parents dash a little two k um and, and and we also, it's an opportunity for us to uh, showcase and celebrate our amazing, rich Indigenous culture as well. So a big part of what the foundation does is, is about uh, demonstrating to the whole country how strong our Indigenous people are and how their strength and resilience is just amazing. You know, for, for them to be able to run a marathon from no running to, to finishing New York in six months is is I think a testament to their capacity to do incredible things, and our our warrior run is also an opportunity for us to to showcase our indigenous culture. So there's a really strong indigenous themed um, you know art and dance and food and and celebration throughout the whole day as well. Um, we have the there's a, a, a alcohol and drug rehab centre up on the north coast called the Glen. 
and they've been doing amazing work helping men to rebuild their lives after the you know a lot of them have hit rock and and they use a lot of culture and they've in the last you know four years since we've started have come and and early on you know sort of they didn't really know much about it and uh, and they'd come down, but they brought, you know, they bring ochre and they bring the men get all all uh, danced up and, and painted up in traditional uh, dress and, and and perform for everyone there. But they've also bring ochre and are actually, you know, putting markings on the men and the women and the kids, traditional markings on their faces, and and it's a way for us to immerse our. Indigenous and our non-Indigenous cultures together and, and showcase and do that through the simple activity of, of running. Um, so our, our warrior run in Centennial Park is great and we also have about another six or eight warrior runs in communities, just free events uh, in, in our communities that our IMP graduates put on and, and host. And um, and then obviously the, the great partnership that we, we started last year and have developed, developed with Park Run to, to give everyone all around the country the opportunity on, on Saturday to, to come out and, and be part of uh, embracing and our Indigenous culture and using running as a, as a way to demonstrate the, uh, the richness and the vitality of, of our people and, and also to, for us to be able to acknowledge, again, those great men in our lives and, and just, you know, sort of uh, on, on, the, uh, on the Saturday at, at all of the park runs to be able to just have a, a stop for a moment and think about those men, uh, those really strong, positive men in our lives who, who you know, we really want to recognise and say thank you to. We are all very lucky, I'm sure, to have a lot of strong, positive men and role models in our lives. You, Rob, would be this role model, not just for your own family, but for a lot of people. But I would like to, to bring it back to your family. You've come from... Uh, you know, a very active family, um, your siblings and your parents were all very involved in sport and running and things. How how did that translate into when you became a parent? Like, how have you approached sport and, and do your kids, you know, are they the sporty kind? Were they nerds growing up? Um, you know, did they embrace it or did they just go, oh, no, not another, not another thing dad wants us to do again? Uh, yeah, I think I think that's it. <laughs> I think um, I mean I've got four kids. So I've got three kids from my my first my first marriage, uh, and my eldest is um, thirty five, uh, and is an amazing amazing woman over in in uh, lives in the US, and I've got two other boys, um, and and it was very hard in, for them in some ways because. When they were growing up, you know, I was I was still running, and I was, you know, sort of a, a bit of a high profile, and there was a, a a bit of an expectation on them that every event that they go in, that they'd win it. So even that when they did run well, it was always, oh yeah, but we, you know, you're you're Rob's son, so we sort of expected you to to go well. So they never really, I think, got the recognition uh, that they deserve for the effort that they were putting in. So none of them have really embraced running. Although my youngest, my youngest one said to me the other day, um, that's Lachlan, he's, um, Lachlan's about 26, I think. Uh, he said to me, oh, Dad, um, when you die, I'm going to run a marathon in your honour. <laughs> I said, Lachlan, don't wait till I die. Do, do it before so I can celebrate and, <laughs> and say thank you. <laughs> but, um, but those three are all very active. But I think the things that they have learned and picked up are the... Uh, the attitudes that you you have to have to to really achieve your full potential, and and that's to me more important than whether they run in fun runs and and all those sorts of things. So um, so that's what I'm incredibly proud of my youngest one, uh, uh, Sophia. She's she's just turned thirteen, and she's incredibly active and, and loves the sport and. Uh, she just competed last weekend up on the Sunshine Coast in the Australian Cross Country Championships up there, and uh, and had a great run. and And so, you know, she's got. Uh, hopefully, if I can cultivate uh, and not have too much pressure put on her, she might, might stick with it a little bit. But she also loves rugby and she also loves soccer. So we'll wait and see what happens. But she's active and 
and again, it's those attitudes which I think are the most important things of consistency and and uh, and you know teamwork and and just listening and being patient and not not being too disappointed when things don't work out and hanging in there and uh, and and really you know putting putting everything into everything that you do to get the best out of yourself that I think are the most important attitudes that um, that I'd like to pass on to to my kids. And you've been heading along to Parkrun with Sophia, and you'll be heading to Tuggeranong this Saturday, I, I imagine. Yeah, 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 absolutely, Scott. I'll be I'll be down there. Uh, we did Park Run the other day as part of Sophia's preparation for the for the national cross country, and it was a great hit out down there. And um, and I'll be down there. We've got a lot of our graduates attending Park Runs around the country, um, and and um, you know, sort of for for them. To be able to do an acknowledgement of country and talk a little bit about the importance of of being a, a noble warrior and the men in their lives, um, it's a it's a way for us to continue to to push and encourage and provide opportunities for them as leaders to stand up and to to uh, um, you know not just do incredible things, but we we've, we've got to share that with them. You know, I say to them. The fact that you've done something like running a marathon in six months is great, but if no one knows about it, then then you're only really impacting on yourself. We we need to find ways to, to share that achievement and and to demonstrate the incredible strength and resilience that you've shown, and uh, and and you know reset the stereotype for Indigenous people. Uh, unfortunately, in the country, a lot of what we hear about are, are only the negative things. You know, all the, all the closing the gap type things are uh, focusing on on addressing the negative. And what we also need to do is to showcase and highlight the positive things. Otherwise, the negative will become the stereotype and, and that becomes the norm. And it's not the norm. It's, it's still a minority. And so we need to ensure that, that non-Indigenous and Indigenous people coming through see the, the positive strengths and the, and the attributes um, and you know these amazing role models and examples and leaders that are out there as as the norm, and uh, and that's how hopefully we can really make all Australia proud of our indigenous people and our indigenous culture. Because you know why would you be proud of something if if all you hear about is that we need to? It's really important, I think, for us in terms of advancing our indigenous culture and and uh, advancing our indigenous people. To, to showcase and, and celebrate these positive attributes and achievements. Gee, I'm glad you said that too, Rob, because I agree. There's a lot of negativity around this, and what I'm passionate about it. I, I'd like to see a lot more of this creep into our park run Saturday mornings. I think it's really important that the grads are going to do the acknowledgement of country at some of the events they're visiting this weekend, and I think it's great. I, I really do. We want to start promoting the positive aspects of the Indigenous culture and people, and I think this is a great way to do it. Um, so thanks very much. I thought we were going to talk a little bit about your running history, but I think you're going to have to come back, Rob, because um, <laughs> we, we've gone long enough on uh, the IMF and IMP stuff that uh, I think you're going to have to agree to come back. Absolutely. Always always happy to, Scott. <laughs> Any time. We have some roving reports this week, but I wanted to intro the first one with an apology. A couple of weeks ago, the president of Parkrun Australia visited WIPA, an event that we definitely do not hear enough about, and he got some roving reports, but I missed them. They were sent through, and for whatever reason, I missed them. In your defence, Scotty... He did blindside you with a very interesting article, which you also managed to not read. Yep. Don't, people, don't message me on Facebook. I don't like it. <laughs> I'm not reading them. <laughs> He's not going to retain that information. Send us an email to yes. Parker and Adventures. Remember, it's 2018. I'm all about the emails. But let's get, let's get to the president and weeper. Anyone can say, oh, Park Run Adventurers. This is Scott Watkins. I'm reporting in from Seoul in South Korea where there is no Park Run yet, but I am off on a bit of an adventure. Uh, so while Joanne and I are event directors at Albert Melbourne Park Run in Melbourne, I work in Korea and, and my job does take me around the world. And 
I get to do a few different adventures. And a few weeks back, I did the uh, KK challenge, which was Cologne in Germany and Kedron in Brisbane. So I left Germany on Thursday night and arrived in Brisbane at about 6.30 on Saturday morning. Uh, got a hire car and rapidly got to Parkrun. Made it there by about 7.21 and headed off just as the first finishes were finishing. So I, uh, I managed to catch the tail walker at about the halfway point and finished about 290th. Uh, but in the last few months, I've also had a few adventures in some other parts of the world. So I've been able to do park runs in Berlin, Vancouver, and San Francisco. And this park run day, I'm adding another exotic location to that list, and this is Weeper. So it's quite a journey from Seoul to Weeper. Uh, in fact, I've got four planes to catch from here. So I'll, uh, I'll check in when I'm a bit closer. So I have made it to Weeper. So when I left Seoul, I got a flight from Seoul to Hong Kong, Hong Kong to Brisbane, Brisbane to Cairns, and my layover in Cairns ended up being very quick, 10 minutes, bit of a run from the plane from Cairns. Fortunately, the plane to Weeper was pretty small, so it was just sitting there on the tarmac with everyone on board waiting for me, and I uh, saw the baggage cart go past with my bag on it, so that made me happy. So I got on the plane, flew into Weeper, and arrived Friday afternoon. So here we are. It's really lovely here. It's uh, sunny. There's lots of blue sky and water and incredibly red earth coming into Weeper. It was just amazing. Weeper's a, a bauxite mining place and the ground is just red and there's just piles of red dirt everywhere that they just dig up and put on these giant conveyor belts and fill up ships and then send it to where I came from. One of the places is Korea. Send the bauxite there and it gets uh, refined into aluminium. Um, so yeah, so the water here looks amazing, but uh, yeah, no swimming because there's plenty of crocs out there apparently. So I won't be doing that, but we'll head on down to Park Run in the morning and hopefully catch up with a few of the locals there. So now, Park Run Adventurers, I'm here with Alicia, who's the event director here at Weeper Park Run. So first of all, thank you, Alicia, for putting this on this morning. I really enjoyed it. So how did you first find out about Park Run? I found out through my aunt, Tonya Cook at Point Cook Park Run. Uh, she had been doing it for a few years and I went along with her one Saturday and fell in love with it. Found out that Albert Melbourne was near me, so I started going along there and have tried to go as often as I can ever since. And how did you come to be the event director up here? So my dad was working up here for Rio and when he moved up to Weeper, he'd already caught the Park Run bug uh, from his time in Perth. And he decided to set one up, and uh, it took him just three months to get it up here. Then when I came along, uh, Dad actually left town about six months later, and I took it on myself so that it would keep going for the community. That's awesome. Was that a, uh, did you have to have your arm twisted to take it on, or were you just passionate enough about it? No, no, I do. I love Parkrun, and I think what it brings to the community is fantastic. It's been great for me as a, a networking someone new to town, getting to meet uh, all our volunteers and all our participants, um, and particularly as a school teacher to connect with the kids as well on the weekends. It's been wonderful. And I, I have heard that from people, that a lot of people up here are, have moved here for work, so they, don't, they didn't grow up here necessarily and don't know people. Is, is that your experience? Yeah, look, it's a very transient community, particularly with the mining industry. Uh, and because of that, we do have a lot of people coming and going. And Parkrun is just a constant. And particularly for people coming from out of town who do know Parkrun, it's been good for them to have something that they're already familiar with when they come to town something for them to meet new lo meet locals as well and make new friends uh it's yeah they they've really really enjoyed it and we're quite a sporty community too so it's really been taken up quite well by everyone in the community yeah, I, I mean, on that, I, I, the reason why I'm here, obviously, is, is to do the uh, the marathon tomorrow. And that, that, that's sort of come out of this community from Parkrun. Is that is that true? Yeah, so we uh, got together a committee, and most of them are actually Parkrunners as well. Uh, so that's kind of how we all met each other and uh, started off talking about uh, this running event tomorrow. And, and as you can see today, we've got kind of a collection happening for tomorrow. So a lot of our participants for our, our running festival also do park run, and that's been great to see. We also have the kids triathlon today, and a lot of our uh, under-11 park runners are actually participating in that as well. Uh, so they've been using us for training, which has been fantastic to see them really pushing their personal best and getting out there with their parents on a weekend and participating in something that they love. Yeah, that's really great. I mean, I think seeing Parkrun seed other events and, and support other events in, in the community is a really, really great thing to see. And has it helped you personally meet people up here? 
Oh yes, coming to Weeper as as a uh, first year teacher and and not really knowing anyone in town except my dad. It's it's been great to just make those connections with other people and yeah, meet people who are interested in similar things. Okay, and tell me about the school. How big is the school here? Uh, so I work at the local Catholic school. It's only been open for this is our third year. Uh, so we have about 170 students at the moment. I teach a class of 17 year fives. Uh, so quite a small, quite a small school, but um, I found that really welcoming as well to be in a community with, uh, I guess, small, smaller class sizes, and you get to know the kids really well and the staff as well. And that's 170 over what age? Over yeah. prep to year six. Okay. Okay. Great. So it's not tiny, but it's it's. No, uh, we are the second uh, school in town. So there's also uh, Western Cape College, which is our local public school, um, and they have all the other students from town and from uh, local communities just outside of town Uh, but we are I guess a a different option for those kids who want to come over to a smaller community. Great well thank you for speaking with everyone on the Parkrun Adventures podcast today and thanks for everything you do for your community Alicia it's it's amazing you know I obviously know what some of what goes in behind the scenes but but it is amazing you you do great things you're a hero in your community so thank you for what you do. All right thank you so much for making the trip up it's wonderful to finally meet you and um yeah I look forward to future events and possibly coming back to Albert Melbourne. <laughs> great okay thanks a lot. <laughs> So I'm here now with Lorraine, who's a regular participant here at Weeper Park Run. So how long have you lived in Weeper? Um, we came up nearly 12 months ago. We come up here usually every year and mine people's houses and look after their pets. But because so many people wanted us, we've been here about 12 months and, you know, we're booked out till next year. Wow. So it's nice. We can come on this walk regularly now. And had you done Park Run before you came to Weeper? No, we we um, would just do little walks here and there wherever we were, but very rare. And because of my illness, um, I thought I wasn't able to walk because I didn't have the energy. But fortunately, the hospital here discovered what it was, gave me the tablets, and so I've been walking for nearly 12 months now. That's amazing. And has it helped you meet people here in Weeper? Um, yeah, well, I recognise their looks. <laughs> I can't remember their names, unfortunately, but... Yeah, we just put our hands up and say hi, and yeah, they're very good. Everybody knows everybody. Yeah, that's really great. Well, thanks for speaking with us today, and thanks for everything you do for Parkrun. Thank you. So next with me here is Noel, who is the principal of Western Cape College. So tell us a little bit about the college, Noel. Uh, We're a large schooling environment in a remote location. We've got about 1,000 students. 60% of those are Indigenous, local Indigenous students. And uh, we run a high school, two primary schools, and also residential uh, campus uh, like a boarding school as well and you've been doing park run here for a little while uh yeah I, well uh probably a couple of weeks after its inception so yeah it's been great and and have you traveled to other parts of the country and done park run on your travels uh yeah done one in brisbane and one in lismore okay and well, tell me about here so what what sort of involvement have you seen from the students in in park run here so we get a whole range of students uh, both indigenous and non-indigenous uh getting involved a lot of them are involved in their own athletics programs so they might be cross-country runners or or athletes uh, training for long distance events at our uh, regional and state events so we get a a really eclectic group and um, they all enjoy it it's a great community event and what about the community in general have you have you seen awareness growing about parkrun here and and more participation absolutely Uh, sometimes here it's weather dependent so this time of year in our um, dry season, uh, I guess you could call that our winter, but it's not cold. It, uh, it's a little bit more popular when it gets hotter and wetter. Uh, the numbers do tend to drop off a little, but generally speaking, it's a, a really positive community uh, function for so many people and it's a great way to start the weekend. Great. Well, thanks for speaking with us today and uh, thanks for participating in Parkrun and, uh, and all you do for your community. Thanks, Scott. Really appreciate the effort of Parkrun to be a real uh, community contributor. So I'm now here with Kat, who ran Park Run this morning, and you're a, a, a regular visitor here to Weeper, is that correct? That's right, yes. I come up here and I do some contract work as a dietitian. Right, so helping the community get healthy and, and as well as doing Park Run. That's right, that's the aim, and I promote Park Run in my consults. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I mean, that's something that we're really interested in, in, in Park Run, you know, across the country, about getting more medical professionals involved in, in promoting it. So that's really great. So tell us your story. You, you live on the Gold Coast, but you spend time up here. 
I do, yes. So I've been really lucky to have been coming up to Weeper for nearly 12 months now and I cover the dietitian position when I'm up here, which is based at Weeper Hospital but services remote Aboriginal communities as well. Great. And how, um, how many park runs have you done here? Oh, that's a good question. I'd probably be coming up to about 10 and pretty much every weekend I've been here I've, I've been involved in park run and I was lucky to be here for the 100th park run so yeah it's, it's a great community event here in Weeper it really brings everyone together. Yeah. Have you like met people through doing park run here? I certainly have yeah yeah it's been a really good uh, way to interact with the community and through park run I met a fellow group of runners and we've been training for the Weeper running festival this weekend. Yes, and, and Kat's standing here. She did a very gentle run by her standards apparently this morning, but doing the half marathon tomorrow here? Yes, I am going to give the half marathon a go tomorrow. And, yeah, the track looks really fun. It's sandy. It's got some trails. Uh, we're hardly on bitumen, so it's going to be going to be a fun day out there tomorrow, I think. And going back to the your work as a dietitian, so working with the Indigenous communities and, and more remote communities, do you see the, a greater awareness amongst them of, about parkrun and maybe trying to build some in, in, better, stronger connections with them? I think that's a really... I think there's a great opportunity that lies there and something that can certainly be explored. Um, yeah, this is it's such an inclusive and, and welcoming event and, like I said, I'd be really keen to try and bridge that gap between community and um, getting them involved in Park Run. Our, our closest community here to Weeper is about a 10-15 minute drive, so maybe it's something we can explore, getting a bus that can bring some community members in every Saturday morning and, and get involved. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks for all you do for Park Run and uh, good luck tomorrow and I hope you keep enjoying it up here. Thanks. I wish you the same. So just a quick recap on an amazing weekend at the very pointy bit right up at the very top of Australia. Firstly, I neglected to comment on the Weeper Park Run course. So it's a flat, fast course. It's pram and dog friendly. It's out and back on pretty much the only paved path in town. But it starts right in the centre of town, so it's really close to the hotels and the lovely cafe where we went for breakfast. And when we were there, the town authority had just built them a brand new covered table and chairs where they can have their scanning and stuff. Uh, after Park Run, Mike, who's actually the husband of Lorraine, who I interviewed, took my friend Carol and I on a tour of the town, which was very generous of him. Um, it's certainly an amazing place. The bauxite mine is the largest in the world and it's getting bigger. Uh, there are about 3,000 residents in Weeper and about half of them work for Rio Tinto who own the mine. But there's definitely a real strong sense of community here, which is essential when your, your next big town, Cairns, is, a, is an incredible 12-hour drive away. So I can confirm that the crocodiles are definitely real. Uh, Mike spotted one floating in the river and we watched it through his binoculars. And just to further reinforce Australian stereotypes, the river also has sharks in it. Uh, so the running festival on Sunday was great. Over 200 people participated across the five events. Uh, so a big thanks to Alicia for Park Run and being part of the committee. Lauren, who's the president of the Weeper Running Festival Committee, did a, a great job. And Lorraine Lawson, who's actually one of the event directors at Cairns Park Run, was the race director for the run. And Lorraine did a great job uh, sharing all her experience. The marathon was tough. Uh, so we set off at, in the dark at 5 a.m. And the course was exactly as, as Kat described it in her interview. Um, in terms of results, Carol managed second female in the marathon. And um, as for me, despite running about an hour slower than what, what my marathon PB is, I managed to finish eighth overall. So, yep, a top 10 marathon finish. Uh, there were only 11 participants, but I'm keeping that top 10 finish. Um, but seriously, though, what was really great in the half marathon, Kat, who I interviewed, was the overall winner. Uh, so she ran down the lead guy in the last uh, few kilometers. And personally, I guess like many things here in Weeper, I attribute this good thing to Parkrun. Um, it's certainly been an amazing Parkrun adventure for me this weekend. And best of all, I'm now only two flights away from my home in Melbourne. So it's Scott Watkins signing off from Weeper in the very, very far north of Queensland. Good morning, Parkrun Adventurers. It's Melissa here for the Channel 5 News crew coming to you from Wimmera River Parkrun Launch. I've got with me one of the co-EDs here, Candy. Hi, Candy. Hi, Mel. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Now, listen, you are showing off. <laughs> oh, my God. We're doing well. Australia. <laughs> The, you need to come to Wimmera River this, Park Run. This is setting the stakes pretty high. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's an out and back along the Wimmera River. Surprise, yes. surprise. Yes. <laughs> Over the centenary footbridge. And it's just 
picturesque. It the is magnificent. sun is out last week. The sun is amazing. All week we've had sun. We were just crossing our fingers, making sure it was staying for this one, for today. Now, so, as as an adventurer, th- this has been whispered about for a very long time. For a very long time since March. It's probably no, it's probably been whispered about since maybe January. About our earliest probably January. Real the real whispers started in March. So, how did you get it together? Andrea Draper. Oh, <laughs> she was actually the one who planted the seed and said, um, as I said in the talk this morning, was. Uh, do we have a park run here? And if not, why not? And she used to be a Horsham person, so she was obviously coming back. And yeah, if not, why not? And then next minute, Soss and I got to talking, and we both said, "Let's run with it." Pardon the pun. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good. Now, do you have a history with park run? What's your story? None. Oh, I'm a mother of two. I've just, I've got a nine month old and a four year old. So I have no idea of the world that we've just entered into. <laughs> you don't really. But know. <laughs> the vibe here is fantastic. You'll be wearing, and it's um, addictive. Like I can tell why it's addictive. Pretty soon you'll be in purple tutus and uh, cheetah ears. I'm totally okay with purple tutus and <laughs> cheetah ears. I nearly dressed up this morning, but I, I knew that there was the tutu gang coming, so I thought I'd better leave it to the to the pros. Our See uh, how reputation precedes us. Your reputation <laughs> does precede you. We knew about the tutus months ago. So how many do you think you got here today? Any idea? What are you up um, to? We were. I think we've definitely hit the 200 mark because we've had to get the next stash of uh, tokens. So nice. we're 200 plus so far, and obviously not everyone's coming through yet. So I think we're about 45 minutes. What are we? What are we? We're about, we're an hour in. Yep. Yeah. So That's great. And you've got the, is it Rotary? With we've got the, the East Rotary Club um, cooking the brekkie and Hill Ross donated the food for us and Café de Curb on the hill giving the coffee fixes for everybody who's been up. So the community's got right behind it. They have. It's been absolutely awesome. Yeah, yep. it really has. That's good. Really so. hoping that it keeps keeps going. As a volunteer roster looking for the next few weeks. Yeah, we're getting we're <laughs> slowly filling. I think everyone's scared with the concept of those roles, but we'll uh, but I think they'll see how easy it actually is and yeah. Hopefully in another couple of days we'll have next week's roster full and then it'll uh, bump ahead into the next few weeks. So And have you um got the whole family down here today? Not today, no. Hubby works away, so he's away for the next two weeks and my mum's got the kids because I didn't know how long I was going to be here today. <laughs> so I've left Coop and Paige at home with Nana and uh, I'll catch up with them later when we're finished. Because it does consume a bit of your morning once you Just... factor in going to brunch. Yes, yes, and register, like do all the uploading or whatever you call it. Do the it. results. Yeah, do the results. And the socialising is very important. Yes, yeah, it is very important. Next week I'm the tail walker because I actually haven't done the track yet. <laughs> so it's my way of uh, getting involved on the track oh, to do that. That sounds good. <laughs> Tail walking's a nice role, though. You get a different perspective. It, yeah, you're actually out on the track. It would be nice to see. Yeah. So. yeah. Right. Well, it was lovely to meet you, Candy. Lovely Thanks for talking you. to me. Yes. And um, good luck with the future of Wimmera River Park Run. Thank you so much. Howdy, park runners. It's Tok reporting in from Wimmera River. This is an absolutely sensational day. We're looking up a river and there's a bridge here that Scott Trickett needs to run. It is the bridge of all bridges. I'm with Soss. Soss is one of the co-event directors. Howdy, Soss. How did you think the day went? Yeah, g'day, guys. Yeah, fantastic morning. Uh, great support. Uh, 243 is our total runners for the day. So, wrap with that. That is an amazing number given you, what, three, four hours from Melbourne? Yeah, four hours from Melbourne. So it's a, it's a fair drive and you've got that sort of numbers and a great number of locals out and about. There are quite a few uh, Horsham footy tops and lanyards out on the course. Yeah, for sure. And we've, we've tagged into the uh, the Wonderland run at the Grampians this weekend too. So lots of great tra- uh, travel trail runners turned up as well. So making a double weekend. Yeah, I see you've been out marking the course out there. It's looking like being a terrific event as well out in the uh, the Grampians. Yeah, wearing a few hats, so yeah, doing a bit of trail marking on those 20 and 36k courses and then yeah, ED and RD for uh, Wimmera River Park Run. So it's awesome. I'm, I'm sitting here and you can see probably 80% of your course from from the start line. Yep. Give us a quick description of the course. Yeah, so it's just an out and back 2.5k, so we run up, uh, up to the new... Wimmer River footbridge, uh, Anzac Bridge, across that, out then along the river, along banks along the other side for 1.5 k's and then we turn around and head back and back to the state line. We do run past the uh, Horsham Caravan Park too, it's part of the course as well, so it's some great accommodation, just probably 500 metres from the start line too, so yeah, 
all visitors are welcome. And when you when you're doing your out and back on the other side of the river, you're only about 50 metres from the start line, so there's a few waves going on across the river. Yeah, plenty of support. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, you picked a crack of a day for it, Sauce. There's not a cloud in the sky and it's uh, gorgeous up here. Yeah, beautiful winter weather. Always perfect up here, guys. Well, thanks for your time, Sauce, and um, yeah, enjoy Wonderland. No worries. Thanks, guys. Cheers. At the top of the program, we talked about my visit to Eastern Gardens, which was one launch in Victoria. There were two reports from our Channel 5 news crew from the event in Horsham, Wimmera River Park Run. Victorians rule. It's a Victorian domination over the roving reports this week. Yeah, we need to get our Channel 5 news crew out in the other states happening again. Mm. Oh, let's, let's cut Greta some slack because she's been, she's been delivering. She has. This is true. Everybody else, if you still want to be involved in the Christmas episode, you're going to have to give us some content before the end of the year. We never did get a news crew member from New South Wales. It is the black hole. It is the black hole of the parkrun adventures. I, I don't know. I don't think you give New South Wales enough credit, Scotty. I, well, think, I think they give us enough credit. There. Perhaps they're just quiet because they're just happy with what happens. Hmm. Maybe, maybe. Who can tell? They've got a couple of uh, anniversaries happening this weekend, though, in New South Wales, which could be good to go to if you happen to be in those necks of the woods. First one up is at Blue Gum Hills. Broad Beach Waters and Capella Bar are in Queensland, also celebrating their anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> in Varel in New South Wales. I'm combining them, Mel, because there's so many. Lockheel in South Australia. Then we've got Newport Lakes in Victoria. Wagga, New South Wales. And we're finishing up at some other lakes and W's at Warner Lakes and Warwick in Queensland. There we go. Let's get on to Streaky September because, Mel, you're going to take us through the rules as just a refresher. I am. We're we're pretty excited about this. Um, Personally, it was was a big challenge for me last year and I know there were a couple of days that just got that little streak in by the skin of my teeth. Um, But you know what? This year, Scotty, I'm considering combining it with a couple of other personal challenges. I've been having a lot of Skittles lately and a lot of chocolate lately and a lot of wine lately. (laughs) This is the, this is focusing on the more, the happier, not the healthier part. Mm. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about streaking without chocolate or lollies or wine for September. Sugar free September. Well, I won't go so far as sugar-free because I'm pretty sure I will still indulge in baked goods. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't want to be that kind of, you know, strict about no sugar. Like I, I don't want to put that kind of thing on myself. But certainly, yeah, the kinds of lollies and chocolates that you buy, that you purchase and, um, mm. yeah. I'm going to join you, Mel. I'm going to join you. You've taken yeah? a brave, bold step. I've been thinking about, I think I'd probably drink too much coffee. And oh, Scotty. Yeah, I know, I know, but I'm not, I'm not 100% sure it's good for me. <laughs> You're just thinking that now? Yeah, well, I do enjoy it. It's, it's delicious. But for many years, I didn't drink coffee. And I've met a couple of really weird people recently who don't, you being one of them. Yeah. And they, you know, they seem I, I pretty I do manage normal. to survive and function. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mind you, I do eat a lot of chocolate lollies and drink a lot of wine. So perhaps that's, those vices are making up for the fact that I don't have coffee. I don't know. You give up that. I'll give up coffee for September. We both do streaky September. Let's see how far we go. Let, let's focus on the, the 2K part of it because we still haven't got to the, to the rules. Yes, so this is the part that we want everyone else to participate in. You can opt in or out of getting rid of a vice for the month as well. Um, just to like supercharge your streaky September challenge. Um, But the rules of the challenge are every single day in September, you need to run or walk a minimum of two kilometres. And we, I mean, it's an honour system. So everybody has to just, you know, 
keep a track of their own records. We're not going to be keeping notes on people. However, we will be creating an event where everyone can share their runs uh, or walks and maps on Strava or experiences with Streaky September. You do not have to limit yourself to 2K. So if like Scotty, you're feeling super energetic, you could do a lot more. And park run, of course, counts. So we're starting everybody off on the right foot. Streaky September, we have lined up this year to start on a Saturday, otherwise known as Park Run Day. So bang, there's your first streak in the bag, unless you're volunteering, in which case we recommend you show up early or run or walk afterwards. But that's pretty much the rules. If you want to, um, please, we encourage everybody to join the Park Run Adventurers Club on Strava because that way you can also post your, your runs like directly there and you don't have to share them anywhere else. And we do encourage everyone as well to hashtag Streaky September so that we can look up your hashtags and give you a shout out on the podcast throughout the month to encourage you all and keep you all on target. Because we know that some days will be easy and some days really, really won't. It's hard to fit in two kilometres around life and other things going on. Well, not hard for some. And I want to give a shout out to one of our listeners, one of the legends of Westerfolds, I might add, Amanda, who joined in Streaky September last year and is still streaking to this day. So she's gone wow. a whole year. Streaking. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. And we, we kind of... We we kind of started that, Scotty. We can take a little bit of credit. I know, obviously, we didn't, you know, make a streak for every day of the last year, so that is incredible. But we planted you know, the seed, Mel. The we seed. Planted the we seed. did the seed part. That's yep. what. Yep. <laughs> so I think um, we both said at the end of Streaky September last year, we're going to see how long we can go. I think I lasted two days. You lasted one. I'm pretty sure I never said that. Oh, did you? No, oh, yeah. let's go. I'll go I, back. I said I'll I go was back. I break my streak like on day one. But then oh, okay. in the end, I did do a run on the 1st of October last year. Um, Are you, do you think you're going to see how you go again this no, year? No, 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 no. October 1, I'll be out. But <laughs> um, <laughs> just it, that just proves how much of a phenomenal effort uh, that is to streak for a whole year. That is phenomenal. And last year we had heaps of people get involved and it was it was really great to have the whole Parkrun Adventurers community sharing that all. And uh, we've already got people out there, or one person in particular, who is actively promoting the event, recruiting without being asked. I think we, we might need to give our friend Carolyn a bit of a title, Scotty. The Ambassador of Streaking. <laughs> it's quite wordy. Maybe, maybe, uh, definitely ambassador. Maybe not the and of. Maybe just streaky September ambassador. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. I like the ambassador of streaking, but all right. Well, if we you can like workshop it, we can check. Hey, it's it's up to Caroline, but we just want to give her a high five and say thanks for the support because she's our poems own Hall of Fame uh, member as well. And, uh, yep, she is, and she's actively, although, you know, she wasn't part of Streaky September last year because at that stage, I believe she was either not quite listening to the podcast yet or had only just started and was listening to us from episode one. So she might not have quite made it to Streaky September in time to participate. We're very glad to have her on board this year. And everybody else, it doesn't matter what country you're in, it has been asked, can you streak overseas? Of course you can. If you can do two kilometres wherever you are, you are part of Streaky September and we would love to have you. We have more listeners this than this time last year, so hopefully more people will join in. But that's it. That's it for another episode. Good one, Mel. I think it was a good one. Are you going to warrior it up on uh, Saturday? I am, indeed. In fact, I'm actually going to go out this afternoon and check my PO box to see whether or not my medal has arrived. Will you wear the medal... At Park Run, like, when, are you going to run this week? Or are you run directing again? What's what's? Miller's I plan? am actually volunteering this week, so I will I'm probably. When was the last time you ran or walked at Park Run? Question or notice? Um, Main Beach, a few weeks ago. Oh, there you go, because you just said that we're giving you a head start with Streaky September, and then. You're proceeding yeah, to I volunteer. Also said, unless you're volunteering, in which case you have to show up early or go across late. I'm not saying I'm not going to streak on day one. I'm just saying that park run this week will not be the first streak for me. 
next week. Next week will be my first streak. And you know what? I have been not pulling my weight in the adventurous stakes for the last couple of months. I am aware of this. My adventures have all been at home of late. Um, but things are changing, Scotty. I I have booked flights. I'm arranging road trips. I am keenly aware that I still need to do, I think it's nine more events, different events by the end of the year to wow. meet my New Year's goal. And that's that's a lot of events when you consider a, you've only got – like four months to go. That's more than when I started the year. It was like, oh, yeah, you just have to do two, <laughs> like one one every month and a couple of months just had to do two. And then I have had this terrible streak of a few months where I haven't done any additional new events. Um, so, yes, mm-hmm. plans are afoot and I'm going to be traipsing all over the place and reporting in from lots of new places, which will be exciting. Exciting, challenging. Daunting, I reckon you're in trouble. That's a lot. That's nine new events before the end of the year. It is when you look at my my run directing schedule as well <laughs> and and trying to, yeah, I've, I'm going to be cutting it fine. Mm. Wish me luck. I wish you a little bit of luck, not too much luck because I don't think I've still caught you. Like I haven't been trying new events I lately. think you must have caught me. No, I don't think I, I have. Think we're at least uh, equal. No, I haven't done a new event for quite a while. You did two overseas more recently than I have. They don't count, Mel. They don't count on the Australian <laughs> list and we're Australians, so we only look at the Australian list. I know it's another thing where that I've done more than you, but I'm still behind. It <laughs> seems to be a theme between the two of us. Oh, Scotty. Not sure how much look. I have to actually do to <laughs> surpass you in anything in life, but... Um, something's always conspiring against me. Yeah, so I still haven't caught you. But I I do wish you luck. I do. I genuinely do. Just not too much. Well, you didn't say if it was good luck or bad luck. (laughs) Uh, Jeez, I'm I'm in the mood for a sing-along. I really am. (laughs) I wish we could. I really do. What a shame. What a shame. we, We need to find another way to end it upbeat, Scotty. Can't just be sad every week now that we don't have a sing along. We need, we need, we need something else. Should we find something to be happy about, Mel? We should find something to be happy about. Did Each you week. just catch the fact that my husband just walked into the room and said he wants a sing along in unison after I said it? I tell you what we can do. You know what we can do. I don't. You're going to tell me. I hope. Okay. So, I got the hot tip during the week that to avoid copyright issues, you can play a recorded version of a live performance so the algorithms won't pick it up because it's not people listening to it. You know, Toto wasn't sitting there in their kitchen listening to the Parkrun Adventures podcast and going, right, sure? like, take, take the, sure? those guys down. No, I'm pretty sure. It's it's computers. It's, it's you know, massive nerd power has come together. Um, but if you, you, you play a live recording, they can't pick it up. You think that's going to work, though? We're going to give it a try. <laughs> I'm going to give it a try. Hey, I've got a call going. Okay. Well, I will speak to you next week then, Scotty. On that note, yes, you will. See you, Mel. Bye.